Easy guys, thanks for tuning into this Ableton Live tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be talking about base layering and ways in which you can create subtle texture variations to bass lines. So I'll play you a section of the track and then talk about what's going on in the bass group. So jungly vibe, pretty deep uh, bass that's going on. And as I said, I've used phase plant for this. The bass group on its own sounds like this. So I've got a sub layer, which is a preset in phase plant, which I've just adjusted a little bit. Patch is not really too important. Um, it's just sine wave and noise that's descending in pitch. It has quite a 808 style feel to it, which is why I picked it. Now, a thing to consider when creating bass lines like this that are really deep is upper harmonics. You know, we've talked about it a lot in how you generate them. Uh, an easy, easy way is distortion. When it comes to layering them back together, we want to make sure that it's still cohesive and it sounds like they could be, you know, all from the same synth or the same patch. So sub on the bottom. And it's got a, it doesn't have a delay actually, I thought it did, but it's very soft uh, in the attack, which makes it quite nice. Um, and it means that you don't have to be, you're not fighting with the kick when they overlap because there's not really much of a transient on the um, sub itself. So there's no side chaining going on here. I haven't really mixed it down fully to be honest, but uh, in terms of how it sounds at the moment, I don't know if I'll do any side chaining unless I really can't get enough volume out of it. So then to create uh, some more interest, I've got another harmonic here, exactly the same patch, but with some processing after it. Um, so if I take the processing off, it is the same. And then I've got a distortion, a black box by Plugin Alliance. It's just a tube saturation. Um, they were giving it away for free a couple of months ago. So if you've got it, it's a really handy tool to use. Um, there's the thing I like about it is there's no technical adjustment. It's just two types of tube which are in line, which means if you have one turned all the way down, you'll get no signal out the end because you're effectively turning it down earlier on or later on in the chain. And then after that, we've got a thermal, just on the default preset and a multi-band uh, section on here with triangle fold and nothing on the other two. So just going from 100 hertz upwards. That really brings out that upper harmonic and it makes it quite resonant. Now I've got a reverb on there. Give it a little bit of space and I've got that parallel on the channel so I can mix it between dry and wet signal. And then I've got an EQ on the end, dynamic EQ. So I've cut off the sub, and then I've got a node here which is just compressing that harmonic or just reducing that harmonic that's sticking out. Um, and it means that when the notes come up in the mix, it isn't too resonant because the perceived loudness will change as that happens. So that's what that's controlling there. So when it hits the higher note, it isn't popping out in the mix too much. Much It still sounds balanced. And then I've got one more at the bottom here. Which is 
the same processing, but then I've got a shaper box with the noise, um, which is just going off the top part of the signal. I've got band pass uh, on here, which I think that might be the default actually. And then the attack settings and release on the noise you can set as you like. A pretty cool tip is if you turn it all down to zero, it makes like a fluttery sound. We go like that, which can be pretty sweet. I'll just try to leave that roughly how it was. And then I've got them grouped, and I've got a little bit of processing on the group, but really nothing major. Uh, low cut taken off the very lows, 20 hertz, um, just to remove any information from there. And then a cut at just above 1K. Now 1K is really loud to your ears, so you're gonna have a lot of build up here um, that can become quite harsh and also become muddled. Because if you think you've got your snare in there, in there you've got mid-range bass in there, you've got vocals in there, you've got um, noise in there or whatever, you know, drums, I might have said drums already, I said snare. Um, so there's only so much information that can come out of that 1K area and um, it very, very easily becomes muffled and distorted. So I've taken out some 1K, but then left the kind of high air that we'd want. Really working. have a look at uh, the other arrangement as well in terms of variation. So I've got one more here, um, which I haven't spoken about, which is the same set of processing, but then I'm using Serum instead. And this is one of the samples out of my preset pack that's available on the website. And I've just used that as a more distorted layer to create change and you can see that throughout this 16, second 16 bar, it's flicking between these layers quite a lot to create a nice dynamic difference without changing the baseline. So I've done that, and then in the next 16, I've changed the baseline. So in terms of arrangement, we've got original idea, variation in texture on the first idea, and then a switch to a different style, uh, sorry, a different, melody in the bass line so it keeps the track interesting so i'll wrap it up there and i'll play through this section so you can hear what's going on thanks again for watching and i'll catch you in the next video